everyone's here, even though you did some backbreaking work with snow removal, I'm sure, last night <laughs> or this morning. Uh, welcome. We have listed several bills on the executive session for today, but one in particular I wanted to highlight, House Bill 639, we will not be executing today. So if you're here for that, we have scheduled a full committee work session next Tuesday at 10 a.m. We've heard that there will not be a House session next Tuesday. So we will do a full committee work session, and we've requested the agencies that were in attendance at the public hearing to come back and help us as we do a deep dive on that bill. So we're not going to exec 639. Our deadline for that bill is March 30th. So we are tentatively planning to exec it on Monday, March 27th to give us a little wiggle room if we need it. Okay? Okay, so moving along in the calendar, the next bill is 494. For some reason, I don't get a gavel regularly. Hold on. <laughs> uh, we will now open up the executive session on House Bill 494 relative to the fees collected under the New Hampshire Fertilizer Law. And the chair will recognize Representative Almy for a motion. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move on retain on this bill, and I'd like to explain uh, the pieces of it that I finally figured out two nights ago when I bothered to look it up in dedicated funds. Well, we rely heavily on that, but could I have a second on the retained motion? Re uh, Representative Elberger seconds the motion. Okay, please, yes, inform us. Okay. On, there is before you now a page called Fund Name Product scale testing and horticultural registration. Under detailed activities, it explains that New Hampshire has specific laws governing commercial feeds, in commercial feeds, including pet foods, commercial fertilizers, agricultural liming materials, and horticultural growing media. Uh, that is what it says. <laughs> On, and it talks about registration, labeling, and testing. It says that the department samples and tests products each year to com assure compliance with label guarantees and respond to complaints from consumers. There is a long-term need for the fund balance to support a department initiative to increase the number of products sampled and tested. The fees that go into this are only on commercial feeds, they are not on fertilizers, which as I have never heard of it being referred to as a fee as a feed before, but um, neither is horticultural growing media. So on um, if you look up at the chart in the top middle, on um, this account for at least four years, and as I recall when they came before us, I believe it was four five years ago, and that we'll be seeing them again this year, um, before dedicated funds, they uh, have a ending balance, which is a, at least twice their expenses in this fund. So we have that problem. Why is the commissioner not allowing them to do fertilizer testing if fertilizer testing is supposed to be done in here? But the other side of it is fertilizer testing is supposed to be done in here, but at feeds is paying for all of it. And if they're doing fertilizers, at least half of what they're doing is not feed. So um, there is that question, and also there is a question that overlaps with the OLP, OPLC bill, which is what is a legitimate legal um, amount of surplus that should be retained in a dedicated fund? Uh, we have dedicated funds that are doing two, three times their expenses or more because they're saving up to pay for a building 
because the old one is falling into Lake Winnipesaukee. We've had funds that uh, we're saving up, a number of them saving up for databases uh, and other ways to reduce their, their staff expenses or to be able to do, as in this case, everything that they're supposed to be doing according to our laws. Um, but then there are others where the balance just keeps growing. And that's what the dedicated fund committee looks into every five years. But if we look into it as the dedicated fund committee, we will just be coming back to ways and means and environment and agriculture to, to ask them to do what we could do in a study committee this summer or fall. Um, and I, I think that if, I'm not sure it's allowed, but if we expanded that, that question to be what is a proper balance to keep in the fund, on that we might be able to solve part of our OPLC problem at the same time. I can certainly ask the speaker if he would consider that germane to a retained bill discussion. Uh, and if not, certainly someone could sponsor a bill. Yeah. And we could do it that way. Yes, except that uh, study committees the second year don't work very well. <laughs> but on. Um, it is, um, basically, we could study this in terms of this particular bill, but we couldn't tell the old PLC uh, head that she had to come and talk to us and the comptroller <laughs> together. Uh, well, we could also, we can discuss this later, of course, but we had a ded another dedicated fund bill, your bill, that we've already passed through the House. We'll see when it comes back from the Senate, that may be a vehicle we could utilize. Um, you mean if if I got that that added in the Senate because we couldn't add it after it had been to the Senate? Yeah, yeah. something to think about. You know, wait the different ways right. to keep working yeah. on that topic. That, Representative Ullery, did you have something to say? No, but uh, the the comments that the uh, majority or minority, well, Susan, uh, made, whatever. Uh, are very appropriate having dealt just a little bit with OPLC and, and some of the other uh, uh, dedicated funds across the years, uh, referencing the uh, Department of Safety and the Marina building, which was literally falling yes. into Lake Win Winnipesaukee. Uh, some form of legislation is needed there. I don't believe there's anything preventing um, any particular chair or member from calling a uh, ad hoc uh, meeting regarding this. So th that may be another uh, method, but it's definitely something we should address. And I'll be happy to co-sponsor any such, well, not any such, mm -hmm. such legislation. Yes, we could certainly uh, do a public notice on a non, a, if it's a non-germane amendment and just on a particular bill, we can always, as long as it's noticed in the calendar, we can certainly do that. Uh, we don't have any bills left except the ones coming from the Senate. True, but when we retain this bill, mm -hmm. we could do it then. Right. Other comments on the retained motion on House Bill 494? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Janigian. Yes. Representative Ullery. Yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Spilsbury. Yes. Representative Plattfoots. Yes. Representative Wallace. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Ors. Yes. Representative Rochford. Yes. Rep Representative Almy. Yes. Representative Ames. Yes. Representative Southworth. Yes. Representative Malloy. Yes. Representative Parshall. Yes. Representative Fellows. Yes. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. Yes. Representative Smith. Not here. Okay. And the chair. Yes. 
Okay, the vote is 19 to zero. Would any object? Would anyone object to putting this on the consent? Oh no, there's no calendar to worry about. It's retained, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, great. We will now close the public hearing on House Bill 494. Uh, I will now open and then immediately recess the the executive session on House Bill 607. The prime sponsor has been working on an amendment. And he literally just got it off the press, has not even had a chance to read it. So we will uh, recess that until, well, we need to get through the other one. So I'd say, let's say noon for now, okay? And we'll go from there. Okay, so I will open the executive session on House Bill 607, and I will now recess it to noon today. Okay, now we will open up the executive session on House Bill 445, which is related to operational funds of OPLC, and the chair will recognize Representative Ullery for a motion. Move ought to pass with amendment uh, 2023-0834H. Uh, just to confirm, that's uh, amendment 0834H. 445. This one? Okay, uh, there's a motion to, ought to pass as amended. Uh, would you like to, s well, we need a second for that. All right, Representative Almy seconds that. Representative Allery, would you like to speak to your motion? Thank you. The primary uh, bill we discussed uh, in detail previously requiring, regarding the need for such a fund uh, within o OPLC, all this amendment does is reduce the uh, excess funds uh, are capped at uh, three million dollars as opposed to five million dollars um this uh, uh particular dedicated fund is uh, necessary to uh if you will tide over oplc uh <coughs> regarding their various operational uh deficiencies that take place because of the current requirement to lapse everything into a fund and it follows along with uh, the previous discussion we had regarding the entire uh dedicated fund structure. Thank you. Representative Olney. Thank you. Um, we just had a, uh, I just had a discussion with Chris Shea to know how the OPLC survives now because it is getting uh, virtually very little money until six months after they've had everything lapse. Um, and he explained that with dedicated funds like this, uh, they do the lapse and then the treasurer runs a negative balance, which is essentially on the general fund, but it has to be paid back by the end of the year. Uh, and um, so the, the fund is officially paid for by other sources, which is the registration and other fees that they get, penalties. Um, but it comes out of the general fund, which just got the lapse. It comes back out of it to pay for their operations until they, they uh, uh, pay it off. Other comments? Yes, Representative Fellows. So uh, having some experience from working within a state agency, um, one of the things that's, there, there is, there's not a cash flow issue with this, this fund that they currently have. Um, it's, not, it's not like a business. It's more like a school district or a municipality where you appropriate money and that gives the different agencies, the authority to spend that money, the revenue is is accounted for separately. And the fact that your agency hasn't brought in, you know, enough money from day one to cover expenditures is not a problem because when we vote on the budget, we establish the authority for that agency, agency to spend the money they need to operate to pay their employees and whatever. So, you know, that's just the general context. Um, I 
see no reason for even needing this at all to to change their fund at all they they make sufficient money so far they've always been lapsing money at the end of the year back to the general fund i think that the amendment i'm not see i'm not sure if i'm looking at the amendment or the bill part of it yeah that's fine so which part of it has giving them the authority to um make capital expenditures without going through the oversight of the appropriate committee in the house to do that you know we have a capital budget it's therefore a reason um, to make sure that we really need to to make those expenditures it's i don't think it's up to oplc to decide if they want to if they want to buy a building to have their offices in i think that's part of the responsibility of other com of committees in in the legislature and they can they can get what they need by making a case for it asking the governor to put it in his budget asking um the you know appropriate committees for authority telling them that they need um new facilities if that's the case one of the things that we know is that there's definitely a proposal on the table already to move justice to the building where Lincoln Financial used to be. We know that because we have already approved a project to build the parking garage on their site. So we know that building's going away and they need to move somewhere else. It may be more appropriate if OPLC needs office space, maybe that's the place for them to go. And that's a decision for um, administrative services to make and not OPLC. So I see no reason for passing this bill at all. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. And I should, I did that a little bit in a rush. We're technically first voting on the amendment. So the amendment was moved. So we'll be wow. voting on the amendment first, which okay. uh, is really putting a cap on the thing. And then we will vote on the ought to pass with amendment which includes the underlying bill. So I kind of no. joined those together by mistake. So I apologize for that. Representative okay. Ames. It, it's, I, that's my mistake, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, focusing on the um, um, amendment, um, I, I find myself unclear on, on what changes this makes from current law. Um, I, I was just looking at what I have online as current law and it does, has no limit in it, what I'm seeing. There's no in excess of a certain dollar number. Um, is, there, is there a limit somewhere else? Is it in the budget bill, maybe, a, a, a temporary limit? Uh, no. I, Representative Ulrey, would you cl clarify this? I believe in the bill that came to us from the other committee, there was a cap on it, or no? no. No. They okay. had requested one they requ and passed it without uh, requesting that Ways and Means add a cap to it, which was the request of eDNA, which approved the policy of adding this to the bill. Currently, the uh, what it says in here is it's a, a non-lapsing fund. So the amendment changes it to, I mean, it's a lapsing, it's a lapsing fund. fund. And this changes it to a non-lapsing fund and caps the amount of money retained at $3 million. Uh, currently, as uh, Representative Almy indicated earlier, uh, what happens is the money comes in, it gets sent back to the general fund, and it gets drawn on the general fund. So this is, then they run with a negative balance until such time as they get that paid off, and then they have we depend upon the licensing that comes in and, and how many fees come in and how many, uh, uh, investigations need to take place, how many hearings need to take place, how many people apply for, oh, there's a lot of variables that take place. So what this does is sets up a, uh, I hate to use the term, but it's a fund of money that they can draw from without drawing from, or drawing on, not from, but drawing on the general fund to cover operations, uh, as Representative Almey explained. Representative but, Southworth, sorry, I'm sorry, Representative Ulrey, did you have more to say? Okay. So this basically is a clarifying amendment. It really just clarifies the process. It does put a number in. 
well, as far as the numbers go. Representative Omi, it's reducing the amount of money on that they can retain mm -hmm. permanently away from yeah. from the general fund. Maybe that's correct. Um, I wanted to put a sunset on this um, that would take it back to uh, a lapsing fund in a couple of years, simply to be able to remember that we need they are planning on all kinds of changes, which would make it less expensive so that we could take that cap down further if it was so indicated. Uh, cause, but um, we tried to put it through drafting, and drafting was not being responsive. <laughs> so uh, this is what we've got. Just have to remember that. Uh, we may want to look at it again as a committee. Uh, Representative Ullery, did you have your hand up again, or was that self worth? Uh, yes, I just okay. wanted to remind the committee that we do have a bill coming over in about a month uh, from the other body that's uh, very similar to this with uh, some other language that's coming through. The idea being that uh, this makes an excellent uh, uh, platform for working with the other body uh, when we sit down and uh, mesh things together a little bit later. Representative Southworth. Yeah, no, I was fine. Sorry. Oh, Representative Platt. I just want to say we could pass this bill, and if there's a concern about uh, uh, having a drop dead date to, to, let, to make it lapse, that can be done next year. New bill. Uh, other comments from the committee? Okay, seeing none, the clerk will call the roll on the amendment. So the mo motion is ought to pass on amendment 2023-0834H. Representative Janigian. Janigian. Yes. Representative Ullery. Yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Spilsbury. Yes. Representative Plett votes yes. Representative Wallace. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Orr's. Yes. Representative Rochefort. Yes. Representative Almy. Representative yes. Ames. Representative Parshall. Yes. Representative Malloy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't skip self. So if it's partial replacing it. Schamberg, I had it in the wrong place. Sorry. Okay. Re Representative uh, Southworth. Yes. Representative Malloy. Yes. Representative uh, Schomburg. Yes. The partial. Yes. I had it in the wrong place. My apologies. Representative uh, Fellows. Yes. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. Yes. Representative Smith. Not here. Uh, and the chair. Yes. Okay. Vote is nineteen zero one absent. Okay. Being the vote is nineteen to zero, the amendment to House Bill four four five passes. Now we will vote on the underlying bill as amended. House Bill four four five as amended by O eight three four. Is there any more discussion? Well, do we need a motion on that? Yes, we do. Uh, Representative Ullery is recognized for motion. I move ought to pass as amended on uh, HB 445FN. Is there a second? Second. second. Representative Almy seconds. Now is there more discussion? Representative Fellows. So thank you, Madam Chair. Well, in addition to what I said earlier, um, I would just, now that we know there's a similar bill coming from the Senate, I think that that would give us an opportunity to maybe hear more um, technical uh, explanations of why you want a non-lapsing fund so that it, because my objection is I see no absolutely no reason for doing this and also whether or not it's appropriate to put things in there like that it will be used for capital expenditures which more normally go through administrative services. 
So I would like to, you know, I'm uh, opposed because I would rather see this bill ITL'd and then that would give us more time to take the Senate bill when we get it and get more information. Other comments? I, I appreciate your concerns and we'll be looking to keep a close eye on this in the future. Okay, seeing no more comments, I will introduce the clerk to call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Janigan. Janigan. Yes. Representative Ullery. Yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Spilsbury. Yes. Representative Pletfos. Yes. Representative Wallace. Yes. Representative Soti. Yes. Representative Orris. Yes. Representative Rochefort. Yes. Representative Almy. Yes. Representative Ames. Yes. Le Representative Southworth. Yes. Representative Palloy. Yes. Uh, Representative Parshall. Yes. Representative Fellows. No. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. Yes. Representative Smith. Not here. No, no, not present. Again, sorry. Okay, the vote is uh, the chair. Yes. Okay, the vote is 18 to 1. Consent. Uh, this could go on consent um, if everyone agrees to consent. Uh, Representative Fellows, would you like to have it on the regular calendar? Not not on the regular calendar, but it has an FN. Does that can we put an FN on consent? Mm, depends on the dollar amount, I think. So I don't know for sure. Um, do you well, know if it's? I'm I'm not going to um, oppose it if it. You know, and I don't, I'm okay. not going to oppose it because either it can't go on the consent calendar or if it does, I'm not planning to speak against it. Or anything. Okay, would you like to be write a minority report? Uh, no, well, I, it would be great if we could get it by the end of today, um, but that we don't have to because this bill actually is a second committee bill, so we, we actually do have a little bit of time. I will try. Okay. I mean, I can't get it done today for sure, but maybe by tomorrow. Okay. Well, a minority report means. Actually, tomorrow's not going to be much of an option, I don't think. <laughs> okay. Well, so yeah. And so it, the minority report, uh, Representative Almi just pointed out, if, if you do a report, then it really can't go on consent because consent is, everyone consents that is okay to go on consent calendar. So. Skip it. Okay, no minority report. It will then go on consent calendar. Certainly, anyone has the option to let the members of the House as a whole know their thoughts through an email or whatever. So, okay. All right, so we will now close the public hearing. On, uh, so, ought to pass as amended does pass and will go on the consent calendar. And we'll now close the executive session on House Bill 445. I uh, want to just say hello to our friends who are here substituting. If you could just say hi and tell us who you are, what committee you normally serve on, that'd be great. Yes, good morning. Uh, Representative Wallace, Rocking M8, which is the town of Danville. I sit on as the vice chair on judiciary. Six years previously on uh, criminal justice. And I'm Lucius Parshall over from Science and Tech. And um, I serve Marlboro and outside of Keene and uh, there's four other small towns nearby. Thank you for joining us today. So we're gonna take a little bit of a break right now, come back at noon. Representative Doucette has a proposed amendment to House Bill 607. So he'll pass that out and go from there. Yes, Representative Almy. Oh good, I wanted to get the amendment before we broke so that we could read it. Yes, me too, I haven't seen it yet. So yes, he has those hot in his hand right now.
their worksheet uh, technical or mechanical defects sheet. And by and large, that's what this should represent. So I'm comparing those notes to this.
uh, Representative Doucette is going to go back to OLS and bring those to their attention. It doesn't look like a lot when we compare notes. Um, so hopefully we'll catch it and be right back. But we will now have to recess maybe a little bit later. So if you want to go get a lunch. Yes, Representative Fellows. So we were trying to check them against this, this document. And so we found that the first one wasn't fixed. So we, I think it was, um, yeah. yeah, I was looking for two. Directly, uh, uh, they state the amendment is accurate. It correctly addresses all the technical issues identified by the lottery. Uh, What's he reading? The, the lottery worksheet was incorrect regarding the expiration date of facility licenses and uh, the GOE license. Lottery agrees the amendment is the correct wording. What are you reading? Where is that from? It's a text message. It's a text message from someone at Lottery? Uh, through another person, yes. Uh, okay. So I'm looking at the handout that we got from the Lottery, and the updated. It's it stated that the Lottery sent this to LBA on 1230, you know, at the end of the year. And it, in the first thing on here, it says is on, of the original bill page 2 line 18 that the license shouldn't be asking them to submit something um, annually submit some kind of statement on December 31st it said it ought to be aligned with when the license and that's not changed in the amendment it should have been what's the page in line in the original well on the original bill it's page 2 line 18 and on the amendment, it's so it's 13. so it's Roman numeral 13. three, and on the amendment that starts on line eleven, and it still says December thirty first. Great catch. Well, I'll address that so, also. So I only got through the first two. <laughs> I have one. Thank you. Representative Almond? Yes. Um, I've got a question with page two original on um, D8, um, section five, and the amendment. Uh, it's about the game operator employer license application, the person that owns the thing. And it on um, in the original, it it, which has been excluded now, it says, in addition to the general requirements under 287D5, a game operator employment license application shall include at a minimum the following information provided that the Lottery Commission may by rule establish additional items to be submitted on the application form or attached to it. And they were telling us that if they had some suspicions about the entity that was controlling that on um, they would go from the principal owner even down to people that owned one percent of the operation on um, and look at them and it seems to me like this is being taken out at this point and there's also it says if the applicant is an individual then there's going to be a photo taken. I'm wondering if there uh, is on um, being a lot less uh, on license for the people on the groups that come in as as on um, corporations or as LLCs that they would avoid a lot of scrutiny that they would if they were individuals. I don't know a lot about this area, but I w wonder why that section was taken out. Well, I can just mention that uh, Representative Rochert brought up in the, um, in the hearing, in the work session, concern about 
too much broad making rule authority in lots of bills. In fact, he's looking at other bills in the same regard. So we, as we talked about, maybe not having such carte blanche rulemaking authority everywhere, if if it makes sense to put back under 541A or something like that, but it just was kind of vague there and a bunch of places. So that's why that's there. But I don't know about the photograph. You're talking about the photograph well, piece? One piece of it is the photograph, but then above it, there is the ability of the Lottery Commission to, by rule, establish additional items to be submitted on the application form. Uh, that is just kind of, a, could be a humongous list. So if you'd like to have that go through rulemaking, so to figure out what that list should be, but what are your thoughts? Well, I, it does say by rule, which I presume means it has to go through a jail car. There are other places that it does say under 541, but in some places it doesn't. So I don't know yeah. if that means that. You know, if you look at page four on the original bill, it definitely references 541A, but it doesn't in, in several other places, which I think is kind of an oversight, probably, because everything does mm -hmm. go through 541A. So... Yeah. If if I'm yeah, if please. I might, that that all all the uh, game operators uh, GOE licenses are to a uh, a business entity, so it's not going to be affected by uh, what Representative Almy's speaking of. It they're not going through it. the licenses applied with by a business entity. But it well, I, so yeah. I have a, Where was Ames? a comment or a question. Um, there are, I think, three places where uh, the, the add-on that the Lottery Commission may by rule establish additional items to be submitted, to be submitted um, has been taken out. And I, I'd like to, and I, I know this uh, means retaining the bill rather than going forward on it. I'd like to hear from the Lottery Commission what we're giving up. Uh, and I'd like to understand why, you know, there may be this broad argument that we're delegating too much to the Lottery Commission. I can understand that argument, but um, in this instance, this is a long-standing program. Is there some problem with what the commission has been doing? Have we given too much license to the uh, commission um, through through this kind of language? Is that why it's being taken out? I'd like to, I'd like to explore it, and we're not going to be able to do that in the couple of hours we've got uh, here in a, uh, at the edge of the executive session. Representative Olney. Yeah, and I'd like to say they did tell us some of what's being taken out when I think I I asked how whether they were exploring be, beyond the primary employer and now we're being told that it's an entity which does that if there isn't anything in there about the individuals in that entity on. We really don't know who who is, especially if it's a new one, we don't know who's controlling it and whether they have a record of misdoing somewhere else. Any other comments? Okay, well, so let's have uh, Representative Doucette go back to OLS with some fixes and we will we will come back, yes? Yes, but I, I, I want to be clear, these, these changes to those specifics that we've just spoken about in relation to the specific rules with, with uh, laying them out item for item, I, I think my perspective in looking at this wasn't to negate the ability of lottery to do anything. It was clearly defined in some of these sections, and it seemed to list out a running list. And uh, I know I discussed it with the chair, and maybe you can give some clarity to that because I have no problem keeping this in. This isn't a, uh, a deal breaker in this amendment, but I think where the bases are covered with the plain language. 
that's in that's in the bill itself and the amendment. Because we brought this back from the DB, but um, the real, most important thing about this amendment is to try to correct some of the technical. The most important thing is that we're trying to correct the technical fixes that were identified if they haven't been done already. So that's what we'll make sure that we do. Okay. Point of order. Yes, Representative um, Southworth. Does it make sense, depending on how busy they are, for us to do our quick lunch and then come back and do it? It sounds like a great time for a lunch. So we will. Um, so what I'll do is I'll open the exec session on six o House Bill six o seven, and then I will immediately recess it um, to one o'clock. And hopefully by then we have a clean amendment. Thank you very much. So we'll close House Bill 607 and reconvene at 1 o'clock.
Yes, Representative. Would it be possible to just get a, a sort of rundown on what are the changes in this compared to the last version? Absolutely. The only thing is, one of our representatives just left. I just found out she has another amendment. So we're waiting for that. Oh. I did not know that. So um, read through it and see. And hopefully, um, when the representative moves his amendment, he will tell us what's going on. This is different here. This has an addition. We will attempt to do this one more time. We will open up the executive session on House Bill 607. And I should always remember to mention that I am a charitable gaming operator as well as my husband. So the chair will recognize Representative Doucette to introduce, to make a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Amendment 2023-1024H. Is there a second? I second that. Representative Bolton seconds. Uh, Representative Doucette, would you like to explain to us what this amendment does? Most certainly. Uh, 
not to rehash what we spoke about this morning, but in a nutshell, it addresses the four page uh, bullet points that lottery had given to us prior to the hearing uh, when we heard this bill. Um, it addresses some specifics in relation to uh, rulemaking and lottery's rulemaking and, and brings out uh, and references specifically RSA uh, 541A in four different places that need to be needed to be specified. Uh, let's see. It added some language that spelt out uh, specifics relative to uh, different levels of licensing. And let me make sure, and made some technical and spelling typographical type errors were corrected in this also. Other discussion on okay. amendment. And forgive me also, yes. another one. Uh, at the end, the effective date, it would, it would state uh, instead of in, uh, I believe the original amendment stated uh, December of 24, it specifies that sections 9 and 10, which are raising the max bet from 10 to $25 and the tournament bet to $2,500 would take effect upon passage of this, and the remainder of the changes would take place uh, post uh, after, take effect after 60 days of its passage. Representative Elberger. I really would appreciate a line by line here because I'm finding some of the changes, but I'm not willing to vote on something if I don't have the time to read all of them. Representative, do you, do you have, I mean, it's, uh, what I keep looking at is from what we got from lottery, the last page, which is the technical or mechanical defects. And that is what this is primarily trying to address. So I think that is what this does. But if you want to go through it, please. Uh, we can, if, if that's what you would like, uh, referring to lottery's uh, technical or mechanical defects, and I'm told by lottery that they were all addressed. Um, if you want me to go item for item, I can do that. Okay. Uh, in the original bill, page 2, line 18, facility. I will have to reference that. Also, page three, line five, GOE. Can you just give us the differences between the two amendments that we got this morning? Between the two amendments? The one that we got this morning. Oh, sure. sure. And this one. Sure. Makes it so much easier. Sure. Uh, we corrected that Hold issue. On. Uh, you're welcome to leave anytime you need to. Yeah. Okay. So if if the member would be care to answer the question of comparing the two different amendments. Certainly. If we're just okay. talking about the two different amendments. Um, bear with me. <laughs> okay. The date was correct. Uh, like I like I laid out prior to the the effect dates changed the. Uh, the issue with that you had brought up, Representative, was addressed uh, relative to spelling a particular section. I'm trying to find it here. And forgive me, I gave OLS my notes copy. I'm trying to find it myself. Um, and the four sections where, and I believe we had it written down, there's four sections where it specifically calls reference to RSA 541A that did not specify that in the original 
amendment, uh, if we look on page two, I believe D9, which is line 19, reading down into that at line 24. Uh, in part, it says, in, a, in addition to the general requirements under uh, 287, and it continues on, we inserted the language that says, and I don't know why it's not in italics, but rules adopted by the commission under RSA 541A and establish additional items which was there. So it's basically specifying RSA 541A and that spelled out in three other places. And again, I don't know why it's not in italics for the committee. Yeah, it was definitely a rush job, my apologies. I can't hear you, Representative. The amendment is repealing and reenacting. So when they do that, it's a lot harder for us to see the changes. Representative said there's a whole bunch of things crossed out on page five. That was in the original amendment based on the requests of the Lottery Commission. Is that correct? That is correct. But okay. again, I don't have my, my notes copy. I left it with OLS, okay. so All right. I'm lost so here. <laughs> We, the committee should have all received an email that confirmed through Valerie King at Lottery that their their uh, concerns were addressed in the amendment. Representative Elberger. The four places that I've found, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, include on page one under Roman numeral two, that's the reference to RSA, uh, 541A, and then further down the page under uh, number 5287-D colon 8, the end of that paragraph, some more about 541A. Uh, then the one at 8, uh, 6, uh, 1 at the end of the paragraph there, again referencing 541A. And under seven, Roman numeral two, at the second part of that paragraph, uh, 541A. Is that accurate? Yes, and, and that one's in italics for some strange yeah. reason. So, yeah, it's confusing. Thank I, you. I concur, yeah. Question. Oops, okay, so we have amendment 1024 before us, which has been moved and seconded. If there's no more conversation on that, we'll wait for the clerk to get ready. Yeah, but I, I wasn't keeping up all of my duty. The, uh, uh, the adoption of amendment is? 2023-1024H. And who moved and who seconded? Uh, Representative Doucette moved it and was seconded by Representative Bolton. Thank you. I am now ready. Okay. The clerk will call the roll on the amendment 1024. Representative Janigian. Yes. Representative Ullery. Yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Spilsbury. Yes. Representative Platfoots. Yes. Representative Wallace. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Ors. Yes. Representative Roche. Yes. Representative Almy. Yes. Yes. Representative Ames. Yes. Representative Southworth. Yes. Representative Malloy. Yes. Representative Partial. Yes. Representative Fellows. Yes. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. No. Yes. And Representative Smith, not present. Uh, the chair. Yes. 
Okay, so the vote is 19 to 0, one absent. Okay, now we have some confusion about another amendment. And, and just so you know, the chair does not have to take all amendments, but I will, of course, if you have one ready. Well, I, I don't. Oh. Because what I what I asked for them to draft was just for section 18. Um, Are you well, looking 18, at the original bill? 18 if you look at the original bill. So actually relative to the you know it's the it's the moratorium thing. So I asked for them to change the date from what I thought was January 1st, 2024 to January 1st, 2025. And, and they didn't draft it right. They changed it so the whole bill was, except for one piece, was going to have that date. So I don't have an amendment okay. to do that. Whenever possible, normally we wouldn't be under such a deadline, but we are, so we'll, uh, we will take another motion from Representative Doucette. But Thank you, Madam Chair. I move on to pass on HB 607-FN. Is there a second? Wait, so you, I'm sorry, you're moving on to pass with amendment? As amendment. Okay. And is there a second? Second. Representative Plett seconds it. Okay. Representative Doucette, uh, would you care to speak to your motion? Again, uh, this committee's done a great amount of work on this. Uh, this is a, a a pretty deep subject, but in a nutshell, it kind of gives us a, it keeps pace. There's a lot of uh, housekeeping in this. Uh, it keeps us in pace with the, uh, the lottery as far as uh, the max bet uh, and addresses uh, some technical issues that were laid out by lottery and it also ensures uh, that the HHR game uh, stays in control uh, of lottery and control statewide. Other comments from the committee? Representative Ames. So I, I have a concern about this and uh, it's been expressed before, but uh, my concern remains. It's not addressed by the amendment at all. Um, and as background, I think it's a good bill. I uh, would have liked to have supported it, but there is an issue for me, and uh, it is the uh, it is uh, the effect of section 18 of the original bill, which repeals. Um, the provision that sunsetted, you have to go through various steps here, that sunsetted the provision that limits uh, the operation of these facilities to uh, entities that were already in business um, back when the historic racing uh, law was first enacted. And um, just so that that's clearly in everyone's mind, um, that provision, which this um, this bill this bill would continue in effect in perpetuity, uh, says that in order to be eligible for a license to sell paramutual para pools on historic races. An applicant shall have been game operator employer licensed under RSA 287D as of May 1, 2020, and still licensed as of the effective date of this section, provided such sales are within the enclosure of a, of a facility at which the licensee holds its license activities under RSA 287D and that such facility is located within the city or town in which the licensee held its license on May 1, 2020. Um, 
and an application that is approved by the lottery commission and a license that is granted shall not be permitted to be transferred or sold. So this freezes in place um, the uh, limited uh, number of entities that can engage in historic gaming in a way that I think is is highly questionable and should at the very least be subject to a careful review um, as a, a separate and distinct issue. Um, the difficulty I have with this section is that it it uh, goes to the opposite uh, in the opposite direction and uh, continues the uh, uh, limitation of licensees uh, without any end point. Um, there is, as we know, um, or some of us know, a bill that's passed the Senate, SB 51, that sets up a commission and that, that um, changes the date at which this uh, limit, limitation um, would come to an end. Um, and uh, it, without that date, this, this uh, limitation would end at the, uh, I think it's the end of this uh, fiscal year, um, 2024. Um, so um, I think that uh, I, I would have welcomed an amendment, I gather, that uh, uh, Representative um, Fellows was uh, trying to get such an amendment that would have uh, um, extended this limitation for just a another year. I would have welcomed one that extended it for two years, as does Senate Bill 51, so that we could get our really focus on this question. But we don't have those before us, so I'm really left with uh, no option but to uh, oppose the ought to pass um, motion in the hope that we can get to the point where we can retain the bill and work on it. Uh, and get something in place uh, early next year. Other comments? Representative Ors. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Ames, is there a reason why we couldn't let the Senate and the House versions get worked out in conference? I mean, I like the fact that we're locking this in and it's not going to get spread through all these communities and you know basement operations or whatever it could be so that part i like and as far as the date i agree with you i mean why can't we just let the senate and the house work that out at a you know shortly it's going to happen shortly right crossover days just around the corner yeah well that's a good question uh, i respect that uh the um i guess there are two things i want to say one is i, I agree with you I don't want to see um, these operations on every corner of every city or town or wh whatever, wherever they may choose to go. There needs to be a limit. Um, should there be just, I think it's 14 right now, sites that were in place. Um, and should they all be uh, sort of frozen into the city or town where they are currently located? Um, I don't think so. Um, maybe there needs to be some level of monopolization allowed, uh, which is essentially what that would do, but that seems kind of crazy to me, uh, the one that's in here. Um, I think it w is worth looking at. On the second part of your, your question, your ob what you've observed is that there is this opportunity to go into a, eventually a conference with the uh, Senate and um, I've never really liked the idea of endorsing something that I don't like um, as a way of getting into a conference where we might lose. Um, so I don't really want to go down that that pathway. That's me. Representative Duce oh, sorry, Representative Spilsbury. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm in favor of the bill and will vote for it. But I just want to go on record with a concern, and if this is unfounded and someone can uh, straighten me out, uh, that would be great. But <clears throat> both the bill and the amendment delete specific um, instances 
of uh, what would constitute a minor or a moderate or a major violation. And by doing that, uh, I, I understand there may be some deference to the, to the Liquor Commission, excuse me, the, the Lottery Commission to, uh, to determine that in rulemaking, but we leave them completely unguided. These distinctions are not incidental. A minor or a moderate or a major violation each have a completely different range of fines. And uh, that's about as uh, vague and uncertain phraseology as you can possibly imagine. Minor, moderate, and major are proportional um, to what? And so I'm not sure why the bill has deleted examples. Those examples did not limit the, uh, the Lottery Commission because in each case it says may include but is not limited to. So in either case, the, the Lottery Commission had the discretion to create rules that might cite other examples but at least these gave guidance in terms of proportionality and what we thought each level was. So um, that's something I, I uh, unfortunately was unable to attend uh, the work session and didn't have the benefit of being able to uh, lay that out and hear if there are any answers. But these are not terms that are defined elsewhere in the statute so far as I'm aware. They're certainly not evidently defined in this bill. I would just want to be on record that that's something that I think we might need to revisit. Representative Ducette, did you have your hand up? Okay. Yes, it, and just uh, I wasn't going to bring up the, the other body, but we do know that there's a mirrored piece of legislation over there with a, a date specific, and and there is a process for that. Um, as mentioned earlier, I just want to clarify one thing because this can be a confusing issue. This is not uh, putting a moratorium on charitable gaming. This is very specific to one electronic game that we passed into law last biennium, and we, in in many people's purview, don't believe we've had the time, the time that it was uh, rolled out, and the time to review the impacts of that game. And this is kind of putting the brakes on. So this doesn't mean uh, it, it negates the the ability for any person to become a charitable game operator and take on those charities and and uh, generate revenue for both the charities and the state. It just isolates this one specific game until we find out what the effect and the saturation point and other issues are. So I, I, I don't want to continue to punt this down the road, and I think we'll come together with what the Senate produces, but this is the House side of things, and we should... Uh, dig our heels in and, and say we need to take a look at this and it's not going to negate charitable gaming you know specifically it's one game one specific issue and we need to, to take a good hard look at that and the best way to do it is is to step back stop it and take a good look at it thank you Representative Elberger thank you Madam Chair I'm having a hard time articulating this, so I may stumble a little bit as I go. Um, one of the issues that I had with the um, premium cigars bill was that it had been, as I understood it, historically set up to protect an industry that we had here in New Hampshire. The This bill, which at least at this point says that the only people who are that we will limit the number of licenses for gaming um, is protectionist because, as I understand it, if you have a license now, chances are pretty good that you'll be able to continue with your license. And if we're doing that, I would very much like to see us provide those licenses, issue those licenses to New Hampshire folks. Um, which is certainly not the case now. Uh, I understand that's not the scope of what this bill is addressing right now, but it does provide some concern to me 
I did get a call from someone from the Boston Billiards um, group in uh, Nashua yesterday telling me that they had been bought out by the Jacob uh, brothers who own the Boston Bruins and they live in Buffalo, which really is New England, which I found interesting. Um, but I am concerned that if we are going to be protectionist, and I tend to agree, I don't want to see games on every street corner or even every other street corner, but I would like to see if we can figure out a way at some point to make sure that we're at least giving preferential treatment to qualified New Hampshire operators. Thank you. Other comments? Representative Almy? Yes. Um, I'm having difficulty with this, too. The paragraph that Representative Ames showed me, essentially the way it's worded, as I understand it, on you, we could end up with one very large operator forcing or buying the others out, and there would be one license in the state. Uh, and if we're looking at, at a total ban, and I have a great deal of trouble having watched them over the years with committees of conference. There are times when the leadership wants a particular outcome and they just remove a person and put another person on that will do what they want that outcome to be. And it looks very different from what the committee had. Um, and on, I'm not really sure what to do at this point because on, it's more probable that um, this provision number 18 is going to go the way of the dodo as soon as it hits the Senate. <laughs> and that one way or another, they won't discuss it in the committee of conference. But it is a ma quite a concern given the way that, that that is worded, which was worded when people were thinking that in four years, it was going to be expanded. So thank you. Any more discussion? Yes, Representative Fellows. Um, I can somebody explain to me section eighteen because I thought that was one of the corrections that was going to be made. What does it? Just tell me exactly what it does and when. That it wasn't in the amendment. It's just it's only in the basic bill. Representative Doucette. I'm not exactly sure the correction you're referring to. On, in section 18. Section 18? Yeah. It, next to the last. No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking what, what was the correction you were referring to, Representative? I'm not sure. What is eligible in 2024? I thought when we had a discussion, you were going to put in either July 1 or January 1. This is back from the, so what does this do and when? You're talking about the effective date. No, 18. Original bill, because it's not in the amendment. It's only in the original bill. So it would only happen to. Under the bill, it's effective on upon passage in 60 days after. Well, I yeah. The way it's written, my understanding, it would repeal that statute and it would be on the effective date of this uh, 60 days after its passage. It's not 18. What? Section 18 was in, I don't believe your amendment touched um, section 18. No, my, my, my amendment did not, but the bill at, at its core does, it repeals 287 D5.
I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong. So it says Check repeal. Tw Forgive me, Representative. It would repeal uh, uh, 2021 uh, 66 colon 10 relative to the licenses. It, it would negate that historic horse racing uh, eligibility uh, in that would stop in uh, 2024 would repeal that and it would revert to the language in this piece of legislation would that would be effective in 60 days after its passage any other comments before I, we take the vote so, yes so when does it get repealed according to the amendment 60 days after passage right well this bill would repeal it the the original bill oh, will repeal that effective date oh, beca because it's not section 9 and 10 correct is that is that how is that spillsbury yeah i think i can clarify in reading uh section 18 on line 8 page 9 that eligible in 2024 has nothing to do with repeal that is from the historic horse racing statute so the effective date is entirely governed by the amended section 19. Uh, oh okay i was thinking that eligible in i don't know i thought it had something to do with facilities eligible no okay okay thank you <laughs> we have attorneys drafting that, this that as attorney speak do i don't know but clarity for lack of a better term the moratorium that's on HHR right now, that's what that date's specific to. So the moratorium goes away on, on in, in the in, in 607, it days. becomes permanent. 60 days after passage. The moratorium becomes, becomes permanent. permanent. Okay. It's kind of like double negatives, so. <laughs> Okay, so the motion before us is ought to pass as amended by Amendment 2023-1024-H. The clerk will call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Representative Janigian. Janigian. Yes. Representative Ullery. Yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Spilsbury. Yes. Representative Pletfos. Yes. Representative Wallace. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Orris. Yes. Representative Oroshit. Yes. Re Representative Almy. Yes. Representative Ames. No. Representative Southworth. No. Representative Malloy. No. Representative Parshall. No. Representative Fellows. No. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. No. Representative Leapley. No. Representative Smith is not here. Uh, the chair. Uh, yes. The vote is 12 to 7, one absent. Okay, the vote being 12 to 7, the ought to pass as amended vote carries. Uh, I assume there'll be a minority report. You've got to have a minority. Uh, will there be? Will there be a minority report? Yes, and Representative Ames will be responsible for that as soon as humanly possible, but before you leave today and the next hour. And then, <laughs> because the clerk is you're already emailing me, <laughs> uh, uh, Representative Doucette, uh majority report will also be necessary. Thank you, ASAP within the next hour. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Representative Ullery. No, we voted on ought to pass as amended. We already had voted on the amendment. So I think we're good. Um, so that will now close the exec session on House Bill 607. And uh, uh, except for two people, you get to go home. <laughs> and then we'll see you tomorrow as a House session, which starts at 9 a.m. So please be here for that. No, it starts at 9 a.m. for everyone. 
and it could be a long day, guys, but I don't think we have any ways and means stuff on the calendar, so we've got it a little easier. Um, and then don't forget, next Tuesday at 10 a.m., we have our full committee work session on House Bill 639. So make sure, if you can, take the time to read the bill again and come prepared with questions and thoughts on the revenue-type stuff. Thank you.